Thanksgiving 2023 down the drain. Like I said, it was garbage, straight garbage. And I know we got a lot of YouTubers out there, gig tubers. Oh man, every Thanksgiving's trash. You guys are stupid. Every Thanksgiving. I don't know your market. I don't. I can't even say nothing. I look back at my last Thanksgiving, just last year. I made over two thousand dollars, over two thousand, and I ain't even work over like forty hours. I probably worked about thirty-three, thirty-four hours last year. Made over two thousand dollars. This year, they weren't even giving enough rides to get that. So for everybody out there talking all that shit, oh man, Thanksgiving's always garbage. It's always garbage. I don't know why these gig tubers. No, it ain't gig tubers. It's me they talking about. Let's keep it one hundred. It's me they talking about. These motherfuckers watch my videos. They watch my shit. They all over here. Oh, it ain't that bad. It ain't. Uh, people just trying to make it. No, don't say people, motherfucker. Say me. Say my name. Don't be scared to say my fucking name. Say me. Oh, people acting like it's bad. It's not that bad, man. Every Thanksgiving's horrible. I don't know what these guys are talking. It ain't these guys, motherfucker. It's me. Like I said, I don't I don't have step when I talk about shit. And I can't stand to see these gig tubers out there half step and talking about shit. If you got something to say, say it. Now, when I said this Thanksgiving was bullshit, I'm in it. I'm in it. I drive Thanksgiving. I drive holidays. How the hell we go last year from over two G's, not even working 40 hours, over two G's to this year? I made what? Seven, eight hundred probably. Probably not even that. Probably made six, seven. Who knows? Wasn't nowhere close. All garbage rides out there. And I was out there. It's all garbage out there. Nobody getting rides or nobody getting the fares, nobody getting tips. It was straight garbage out there. So like I said, when I say something, I mean it. I don't I don't mince my words. I don't stutter when I talk. When I said this year's Thanksgiving was trash, oh, it was trash. It was trash. And all these gig tubers out there, it wasn't. It's okay. It's like this every year. I don't know they market. I don't know where they drive. But I know what that statement's directed at because they watching my shit and they realizing how garbage it's been in Phoenix. Phoenix don't operate like that. These apps is up to some shit right now. They up to something right now. They stealing fares right now. They're stealing tips right now. They're trying to edge drivers out using Waymo's and other kind of, you know, taxis and shit. Like over in London, they just got 15,000 black taxis on deck right now. This is what they doing. Even in Phoenix, they got, oh, you might get a taxi if you summon an Uber. You might get a taxi pulling up. We know what's going on. A lot of these motherfuckers don't want to admit what's going on. They want to pretend it's a fucking daffodil being blown up their ass. That's what they want to pretend. And I'm telling you right now, these apps is out for everybody's jobs right now. We know it. Now they got Uber Task coming out. They got Uber Share using people like a, a straight up bus. Uber X Share. Just pick up people on the way. Y'all motherfucker, this ain't no bus. This is a BMW. I'm not doing that. No. Nah. So for all these gig tuber channels out there that's feeding y'all full of shit because they scared to talk about what's really real, they a bunch of ass kissers. They trying to kiss these apps. Say, oh, let's try to get in good with the apps so maybe the apps will be nice to us. Uh, nah, fuck that. They coming for money. They coming for money. And there's a lot of drivers out there that know they coming for money. We keep it 100 around here. We ain't got time for no bullshit. This is where I'm at. Sunday night. It's 8 o'clock, 323, because I filled up last night and I did a few rides and everything, but I'm sitting at full tank right now. But the good thing is, I was sitting at the kitchen table, and I'm like, let me open up Uber real quick. So I opened up Uber. They gave me an opportunity. They gave me a reservation at 9.30 tonight. Look at that. It's at, it was at 10. It's at 9.34. Six miles. It's right around the corner from me, over on Lemon Street, over at ASU. For thirty-five, I ain't never had a reservation coming from ASU for thirty-five dollars. All my reservations be like twenty bucks, so that's fifteen dollars more than my average reservation. Fifteen dollars more, and I bet it's because they had it at ten, and then they switched to nine thirty. They needed a driver. They threw it at me real quick. Even though I don't usually start driving on Sundays, I might not drive till eleven, twelve o'clock at night. But they threw it at me, so I hurry up, jumped in the shower real quick, cleaned the car up, got everything ready to rock. So now I'm leaving the driveway at 8 o'clock, headed over here by ASU to do some short rides until my uh, reservation starts. But I was like, okay, Uber, I see you, you raggedy motherfuckers. But they got boost all night tonight. And guess where all their boost is? It's right around the airport. That's the only boost zone we got. Look in the whole city, there's no boost zone. The only boost are flights that are landing. So you have, to, you have to get a ride from the airport in order to use that boost right there. So I signed up for all of them, but I'm probably not gonna do none of them because if it's that much traffic, $3.50 ain't gonna work for me. I'd rather have a surge for $15, $20. So they don't think they're gonna give us all $3.50 instead of a $10, $15 surge. 
That's how this is going to work. And somebody was talking about that in the comments. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you got a good point. If everybody signs up for boost getting $3.50 per ride, we don't get the $15 surge that we should be getting per ride. It's a way that Uber and Lyft are saving money now by throwing boosts on everything and not giving people surge. I think they're experimenting it right now, but we're going to see if they're experimenting. Because I got a funny feeling that a lot of drivers ain't catching on to that shit. Just like my man, Mr. Hayes, said in the comments. He said that shit in the comments. And I was like, you know what, dog? I think you got something. Going. You're right. I never thought about it like that. So he's like, yeah, I still sign up for the boost and everything, but I'm telling you why they doing it. So they don't got to pay a surge. I'm like, damn, man, I ain't never think of that shit. So yeah, I like when drivers get in there. You know, I love thought. I love, you know, people who actually apply logic to everything and spit logic. What I don't like is motherfuckers to jump on my channel and just start running their mouth. Oh, man, you doing it wrong. And that's the only comment. No logic. No, you know, how are we doing it? Questions about how we doing it? Reason how? No. Oh, you just doing it wrong, man. You don't know what you're doing, man. You don't for one, what motherfucking region are you in? You ain't even said your market yet. Everybody's market is different. So for you to say somebody's doing something wrong and you don't know they market, you wrong for fucking making that comment right off the bat. Find out what market people are from. If you're going to give somebody advice about something, y'all know I'm from Phoenix. I say it all the time in comments. I say it all the time in comments so people don't have to wonder where the fuck I'm at. I'm in Phoenix. I'm in Arizona. I say it all the time. That way, some random motherfuckers don't jump on my channel. Oh, well, you need to be doing this. Where you drive? Saskatchewan. What the fuck you know about Phoenix then? If you drive in fucking Saskatchewan, a kind of a walk motherfucking Wisconsin, what the fuck you know about Phoenix? No, I'm just saying, that's what I do where I'm at. You don't know shit about my region. So don't jump on my motherfucking channel telling people what to do if you haven't said what region you from right off the fucking bat. Shut the fuck up until you say, hey, I'm driving right now in Alaska, or I'm driving right now in, in Jacksonville, Florida, or I'm driving right now in, in Phoenix. Say that shit. Because a lot of times motherfuckers are trying to give people advice in regions that they're not in. I say I'm from Phoenix. I speak to Phoenix drivers. I talk about strategies and techniques that might work in your region. But at least you know what region I'm coming from right off the rip. You ain't got to guess. You ain't got to guess. Well, where are you driving at, Jeff? Motherfucker, you know. I say Phoenix all the time. I got Phoenix all over my fucking maps. I say it all the fucking time. So if you're going to go on somebody's channel trying to give advice, at least say where the fuck you giving advice from. Because if we don't know where you coming from, we can't use it where we at. We need to know who the fuck you are and where you coming from right off the bat. As you can see right now, even on Lyft, there's nothing going right now. Uh, what, like I said, oh, here's something just popped up. What is that? What is that? Shit, 11 miles for 8 bucks? No, I'm cool on that shit. That's going in the wrong direction. Because like I said, I'm trying to stay in the area I'm in right now. Because my reservation going to start in about an hour. So in about an hour, they're going to hit my phone. So I need to be in this area. So I'm only doing short rides in this area. Three, four miles, maybe even five, probably. Eight is definitely too fucking far. Way too far. So if I could just get, you know, a couple of little college students riding from house to dorms, dorms to house, restaurant to house, do that shit, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. But a lot of these motherfucking rides, I can tell already, there's about to be some nature hikes coming from the airport clear across town, 32 miles, $20. I can see it already. And that's why I'm like, I'm not looking forward to that shit. Look over on the Uber side real quick. Open up the Uber Pooper skirt service, fucking Uber Task. You want Uber Pooper Scooper? Yeah. All right, so I got it on UberX right now. Ain't no surge nowhere. I said, the only boost you got is back here at the airport. I'm not nowhere near that shit. I'm not trying to mess with that right now. So if anybody's at the airport, good luck. By the time you hear this video, hopefully you've had good luck. <laughs> Let's just say that. Hopefully you had good luck at the airport. I'm staying away from that shit because I just don't feel like being bothered. Well, you know, especially a bunch of people that don't do the airport that often. It's overwhelming. Drivers usually know that airport inside and out. We know where to go, how to get in, how to get out. We know the little tricky ways to get around from north to south, stuff like that. But a lot of these drivers, you know, they're just normal citizens. They don't go to the airport that much. They're the ones that clog it up. They're trying to unload people in the actual driving lane instead of the unloading lane. They're like, uh, they're parking right where they are. Now they got traffic backed up, you know, 30 cars back because they're trying to hug somebody goodbye and unload luggage. Like, motherfucker, this is not a parking lane right here. This is a through lane. You're parking. Uh, airport security don't even fuck with them. Don't even, but they fuck with us if we do that, but they don't fuck with people like that. It's like, come on, man. Get this motherfucker a ticket or something. Don't let them do that shit because they hindering traffic right now. I'm going to go park up here by this Walgreens and, and kick back. Uh-oh, Uber's talking about something. On, it's probably an Uber Eats. 
I told you, look at that, 269 for four and a half miles. They know better than to try to throw Uber Eats at me. 269 for 21 minutes, you can do that three times an hour. Three times that is roughly about $7 an hour. Three times 269 is about $7 an hour. That's what you're gonna get. So if you want seven, eight dollars and not knock yourself the fuck out, do all those kind of deliveries like that. High AR people, oh, I gotta do that delivery. I don't wanna miss out. I gotta do that 260, man. Fuck that 269. For 21 minutes, no, nah, I'm cool. 269, maybe for like five, six minutes. If you say, hey, this is gonna be take you like five minutes, man. Just come in here, smack this motherfucking hamburger with your hand and just drive off. Five minutes. Cool. Motherfucker, smack a burger feed. <laughs> it's like, what you do? I got 269 for walking in the restaurant just smacking a fucking burger. Took me five minutes. I'll take it. Shit. Motherfucker, smack a burger bonus. <laughs> you like, motherfucker got juice all over your motherfucking hand, dude. What you been doing? Smack a burger bonus. Fuck that shit. Four dollars? Where we at? All right, let's take that. Fuck it. I'm sitting right next to a motherfucker. They right behind me anyways. Shit. All right, let's go over here and get a smack a burger bonus from this motherfucker real quick. I'm going to put this on Uber Pet because I still got my shit coming up. All right, Uber Pet. Deliveries look like it's booming right now because you know these smack a burger motherfuckers is trying to get their food. It was like, nope. I news. Let's go pick up I news. <laughs> my old, every time I see a name from like India or something like that, it reminds me of my old landlord, Kamar Faridi. Coolest motherfucker on planet Earth, I swear, Kamar Faridi. The day that motherfucker met me, when I went and viewed his house so I can rent it, he just gave me the keys. I ain't give him no money. I ain't tell him I wanted to rent it. I didn't give him no deposit, no nothing. He just handed me the keys and said, I want you to rent my house. I said, okay. He was like, I got a good feeling about you. I want you to rent my house. Rented that man's house for the next five years. Never laid on rent. Even when I moved out, when I left, I gave him my um thing. Wait a minute. Is this it here? Wait, let's go up here something. Even when I moved out, I gave him the deposit. I said, you can have the deposit. Because there was no use of me keeping the deposit. I had lived there for five years. He was going to have to replace the carpets and everything else. I just let him have the deposit. He was like, you sure you don't want your deposit? I was like, no, nah, I'll keep it, man. You got to replace the carpets and shit in this place. I've lived here for five years, dog. He's like, shit, that's just normal wear and tear. I wasn't expecting no deposit back. We had a great relationship, man. That was my buddy, man. That was my buddy, Kamar Faridi, man. Trust me from day one. Renting this motherfucking house. And like I said, never gave me grief. He's a his dad used to fly from Pakistan all the time. So his dad would fly over and he, you know, he didn't speak English. So he'd be just like sitting there and Kamar would be explaining to him what we're saying. So he'll be laughing and cracking up and shit with us. But yeah, that was my old landlord, man. Cool ass dude, man. Cool ass dude. Off and then I was gonna do a real quick uh, Walmart run, real quick. There was a guy who hit a, he was like half a mile away so i was like i'm gonna go down here to this walmart pick up this dude real quick so i came down here to pick him up as i'm pulling up this motherfucker has three not one three five gallon jugs of water like the big ones that you put on those fucking coolers and shit he's got three of those motherfuckers and i'm pulling up and i look over and i look at the app and it's him Man, I canceled that motherfucker and kept driving out the parking lot. I ain't even fucking roll my window down and tell him, fuck that. You don't sit up there with three five-gallon motherfucking containers of water. I mean, the big ones that you got to flip over upside down. And a little-ass fucking baby BMW. You need an SUV, dog. When you see a car coming, cancel that. she be like, nah, man, we need something bigger than that. That's a little-ass car. They won't fit in my trunk. So that means I got to put these motherfuckers in my seats. These are leather seats, $3,000 fucking replacements for the rear seats. Three G's to replace the rear seats. So you want to put some fucking $5 goddamn big ass five gallon things in my car for some $3,000 fucking seats. No, you need an SUV. You can't do a BMW. A BMW is not on the list of, of cars you need to use for what you need done. Get a fucking SUV, get a van, get something. Man, I pulled up in a parking lot, turned the corner. I see him standing right there. Three of them motherfuckers stacked up in his cart. Big ass. I'm like, cancel. Drove right past that motherfucker. You don't do people like that. You see a BMW coming. It's a fucking luxury car. That's why I have a hard time doing Walmart sometimes. These motherfuckers don't have no common sense. If you see a luxury car coming to pick you up from Walmart and you got shit like that, fucking laundry and or motherfucking furniture and shit, big ass, man, you better cancel that motherfucker. Be like, nah, we can't do that car like that. That's a luxury car. We can't do that car like that. Let's just wait until we get an SUV like a Chevy Traverse or, you know, a fucking Sedona van or something like that, man. We got these big-ass water jugs and shit. We ain't putting that shit in no luxury car. 
Man, these motherfuckers got me fucked up, boy. And Lyft need to have a button or Uber need to have a button. Both of them. Both of them need to say that shit. We have huge containers. So if you don't want to pick up somebody with huge containers, you can hit decline. You don't just pick up a month. This is ride share. Ride share. We do rides. I don't mind doing rides. But now these motherfuckers got us carrying freight. Three, five, that's 15 gallons of fucking water. And three giant containers. That's freight. That's not a fucking water bottle. Those are water containers, motherfucker. That's freight. So you want, and it was $4 for like a mile. I was right down the street coming this way anyways. I was willing to do it. $4, one mile, no problem. But for freight? Fuck that. No. You need to say, if this shit is that size, yeah, you need to consider that freight. And you need to add like, you know, make that shit $25. Otherwise, they can push that heavy ass basket a mile down the fucking street. I'm not going to sit there and let these motherfuckers load my car up with this shit. And God forbid... God forbid they slide those motherfuckers across my seat and there's rocks or something on the bottom of those containers and they slide those rocks across my seat and it scratches my fucking leather up. Now I got scratched up leather fucking seats that were brand new pristine fucking seats for $4. I got $4 for that shit. Scratching up good ass BMW luxury. Now when motherfuckers get in, damn man, your seats look ratty back there. Yeah, it was a $4 fucking freight shipment I fucking took for $4. Fucked up my seats back there. Now I got white scrapes across all my fucking seats that I can't get out. I got to go take them to a shop. They got to do a refurbishment thing for 300 fucking dollars for me. But I got the $4. Man, fuck these people. Got y'all motherfucking my... Like I said, the shit was rude. The shit was rude. I drove into the parking lot. I turned the fucking corner. I look, I see the motherfucker with a basket. Three big ass five gallon containers. I fucking swipe the app up. Cancel. Last ride, done. Went offline like a motherfucker. It's like, Livia, you out your motherfucking mind, man. These people are tripping. Straight fucking tripping. You don't use luxury cars for freight. You don't do that shit. You need to ask these fucking customers, are you carrying freight? Are you carrying groceries? Or is this just a ride? Ask these motherfucking riders what they doing. We can't just show up blind for four fucking dollars and do whatever they want done. Hey, I know you're showing a yes, $4 ride. It's only a mile. I got motherfucking elephant. I got a bale of fucking hay. I got a whole motherfucking, you know, five gallon water container. I got a wheelbarrow. I just bought from fucking Home Depot. Can you fit all this in your car? Fuck no. Fuck no. For $4? Fuck no. Call somebody with a truck. You got friends? Call somebody with a truck. It's too much shit. For a luxury car, that's way too much shit. This is the second time this has ever happened. I thought I was picking up somebody to bring him to the airport. I'm actually picking up somebody that's landing. This is the second time this has happened to me, so was, I'm still kind of new to this shit. I wasn't quite paying attention to that reservation. <laughs> no wonder it was so expensive. And it was the same type when I received that other reservation like this, it was very expensive. So I guess when the reservations are really expensive, it's a plane landing. When you're bringing somebody to the airport, it's not. So yeah, I guess I gotta hang out and no wonder it's at early. Because the flight was landing. I'm like, man, this shit was making no sense to me. I was like, okay, the person wants to go to the airport earlier. Fine. Okay, cool. No problem. They could have messaged me, but it wasn't that. It was exiting it out because the flight was landing early. Shit makes complete sense now. So I'm like, man. So I'm glad I took, excuse me, took that. But because I live close to the airport, Uber could do this shit to me all the time if they wanted to. I don't mind. I could sit at the house and get fucking $30 reservations, you know, come up here to the airport, wait on somebody to get here, pick them up, take them. I could do that shit all day. I do 10 of those motherfuckers a day. It's about 350 to 500 a day if I get, get good tips on that shit. So I don't mind. I really don't mind. But yeah, a lot of these motherfuckers, man, nah. They be trying to get you to come up to the airport to pick up people for $7. Like, like Lyft. Lyft reservation be like $9. $12 to go pick up somebody for 18 miles of drive. Man, shit. Lyft can stay exactly where they at. I don't fuck with Lyft like that. <laughs> these motherfuckers is nuts. <laughs> That plane landed about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still sitting here. I'm like, come on. There's a lot of planes landing. I'm like, this parking lot used to be full. It's tons of planes landing right now. But I'm like, no wonder these reservations are paying so much, because they have you sitting here waiting. Man, I could have been done did two reservations at $20 a piece and made 40 bucks by now. I'm still sitting here waiting to make 30 something. Man, it's a motherfucking trip. Never take these goddamn landing reservations ever again, ever. 
Okay, just did that route. I got a 350 boost with that, which is why it's 39 instead of 36, I believe. Let me open that motherfucker up real quick. Make sure I'm paying attention to fucking traffic because these idiots around here do ride in the curb lane so they don't get themselves no fucking time. Like, man, you curb laning it. Yeah, that 350 boost on there. So, yep, that was my fare, my reservation fee. You know, I got probably, what, $18 out of that. So, yeah, it came out to be pretty good. He paid $51 for that shit, so... Yeah, I got 350 on that. But as you can see, the motherfucker said it was what? 8.4 miles, which is cool. Cause I was right in the area anyways. Like I said, I did all my short shit. So it was probably instead of 8.4, it was probably about five miles away, about 13 miles. Cause I was about five miles away when I actually started heading to the airport. But it says 19 minutes. That right there is the illusion. I've been sitting over that motherfucker since nine o'clock. <laughs> it's like I dropped him off at 1030. It's like, that's the illusion. When you do those kind of reservations like that, those landing ones, yeah, they're going to tell you, oh, it's going to be 19 minutes. So it's all good. It's all good, brother. We got you. We got you. Man, I've been sitting over this motherfucker. Now. I don't wash my car. I don't put wheel shine on. I rarely use wheel shine because I'm always moving, riding through water and shit. I got wheel shine on a motherfucker. Man, I'm like, dude, they fucking nuts over here. Yeah, I had to take off on their ass that time. These fucking people be going too slow. Yeah, but I'm like, fuck that shit, man. It's like, that is not no 19 minutes. That was more like an hour and a half. <laughs> it's like, I was sitting the whole time, just like going through YouTube, going through my Instagram, going through my banking, making sure I got all my bills paid up for December because December is riding around. I mean, I got the money for December, but I am, as of right now, last month I hit 15,000 by the end of the month. I don't think I'm gonna hit 15,000 by the end of this month. I'm still kind of sitting right now and I'm like, shit, you know, I'm, I'm probably seven, $800 short right now. And that's how bad it's been. I mean, if I would've had the weekend that I should have had two weekends in a row, I'd probably be up about $900 right now, which would have put me at probably 15, two, 15, three. I'm sitting at like 14, two right now. So I'm not doing too well. I'm really not doing as well as I should be doing. And it's okay because we all understand we all got fucked for Thanksgiving. We all realize that now. But, you know, it kind of upsets me that I'm, I'm it's November and I should have been further ahead than where I was. And I'm, and I'm so behind, so behind. Last year, I said, by the time December comes around, I'm going to have, I said, $20,000 in the bank. I said, I said I'm going to have 20. I'm about six, $7,000 short of that. <laughs> it's like, there's no fucking way I'm going to make it with 20 G. And that's how crazy this year is. But I had all year to make this money, all year. And I've not been able to do it because of how they're how they've been fucking with us. I've had all year to make this money and I've not been able to do it. So I'm short on the year, I believe, six or seven grand. What is that, six bucks to go down there? No, nah, we cool on that shit. Nope, cool on that. Let me hurry up and get offline real quick because they ain't got no surge out there anyways. So, no, I'm gonna update later. I still haven't updated my app. I'm gonna relax for a while. I just got through sitting. I'm over by Walmart. I'm probably gonna run in here, get me a couple of crusty dusts and shit, cause I don't feel like buying nothing from the grocery store. Man, it's been a, a wild ass day already. Like I said, I'm short on a year. I believe I'm short six, seven thousand dollars underpaid of where I should be right now. I'm, I'm six or seven thousand dollars under where Uber and Lyft should have paid me. I believe that. And if they would have been paying right, we would have had a good holiday season. Would have had all this shit. Would have been going the right way. I'd be up. I'd be closer to $20,000 right now than what I am. I mean, I still got a whole nother month to do. So there is a way that I can actually get this money, but it's going to take a lot of sacrifice. It's going to take me a lot of longer hours than what I, I normally work in everything. And, and to save an extra $10,000 is only to save an extra thousand a month. That's it. Extra $30 a day. That's it. But I can't even get that. I cannot make an extra $30 a day. I cannot make an extra 30 fucking dollars a day because they're underpaying us so much. It did not allow me to make it to $20,000 in savings this year. I know I had to buy tires and all this other crazy shit and all that, but I take that shit into consideration. And so for me to be sitting where I am right now, I'm $7,000 less than where I should be because they're fucking us right now on fares and everything. I know my numbers. I'm an accountant. I know how to live frugally. I know expenses are coming up. I know mortgage. I know notes. I know all of this shit. So for me to even believe that I could have made it to 20 was not like, it wasn't like impossible. It was very reasonable. But for me to be sitting at the end of the year, I will probably be sitting six or $7,000 less than where I should be based on how we got played this year on what we normally make. And that's just, like I said, I keep it 100 with motherfuckers. If I'm not going to make my goal, I'll tell you, I'm not making my goals, but it's not for me not trying. I know I spent more time on YouTube this year than I spent last year. And that I put that in consideration too. 
it kind of ate away at some of the money. Like I said, I'm probably losing with me being on, on, on YouTube. I'm probably losing, losing seven to $800 a month. Cause I could probably make more. Cause like I said, YouTube is probably paying me right now, 14, $1,500 a month right now, almost $600 a month right now. We can make that shit in a week. It's taking me 30 days to make what I can make in five days. Why is it taking me 30 days to make what I can make in five? Imagine if I work five days times five. That right there would be enough for me to cover everything and not even have to do fucking YouTube. Not even have to do YouTube. YouTube is very slow money. It's very slow. People think, oh my God. Like I said, it ain't like motherfuckers getting a tax return feeling like they're hitting the motherfucking lottery. Oh, I got three G's, motherfucker. I'm retiring. I got three G's on my tax return. No, three G's is not a lot of fucking money. Like I tell people, the money we make on YouTube is not a lot of fucking money. It's $30, $40 per day. I just did a trip right now for $39. $39 it took me. That's all YouTube pays you in a day. That's it. I can still go out and make money driving all fucking day. So driving is way more profitable, way more lucrative than YouTube for me at this point. But I'm willing to take that sacrifice and try to do videos and, and try to edit and try to do live streams and do that shit to keep us as a community moving down a path that we know, a path of logic, a path of saving money, a path of being realistic with this financial shit. That's why I do it for. I have an accounting degree for a fucking reason. I don't work for corporate, so I feel like I'm working for y'all. I work for drivers, man. That's who I'm working for. I use my accounting degree and my accounting intellect to work for fucking drivers to keep us on that path. And motherfuckers say, well, you sound hood. Fuck how I sound. It's what I'm saying. That's what you need to worry about. Fuck how I sound. What am I saying? What are we all talking about together? That's what this shit's all about. And we keeping each other up. We keeping each other on the path of being frugal, saving money, knowing rainy days are going to come, staying in a profit fucking regions. That's what this shit's all about. And I don't mind running my channel for that. Like I said, it costs me money to run this channel right now because I'm losing money when I don't drive, but I can fucking deal with it right now. I got a little cushion. I might not be where I need to be, but I'll get there. I'll fucking get there. Give me a tip because I'm like, it jumped a little bit. Look at that. 48. Okay. He gave me a tip. 881. There you go, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. What was fucked up is that tip, that 325 tip. That was a couple people. Of, I picked up four people in the morning. They gave me 325 as a tip. $3.25. This one kid I just picked up gave me 881 on a big ass trip. Like I'm saying, man, and I'm, I'm cool with that right there. You know, I was at there. I didn't put a lot of miles. Like I said, I probably did 13 miles total for that trip. 13 miles total. So it came out to a little over what? Four, four or five dollars a mile, maybe four bucks a mile. But it was the time killed me. Cause like I said, I, it, it didn't take no 18 fucking minutes, 19 minutes. I was there from like nine o'clock to almost 10 30 until I finally dropped him off. But it's like, hey, shit happens, man. Sometimes you sit and you wait. I can sit in a Circle K parking lot going nowhere sometimes. So that's the way I chalk that shit up as. It was just me sitting in a Circle K lot waiting on them to get off the plane. I'm cool with that. As long as I wasn't putting no, a lot of miles on to make that 48 fucking dollars. I wasn't using no fuel to make that $48. It was just me waiting on him to get off the plane. And then he tipped me eight bucks. But I appreciate that shit, man. Like I said, little stuff like that, it, it hits us in the heart as drivers. It helps us keep doing this shit, even though we know these apps are fucking us over. It keeps us doing it when people, when the riders are taking care of us. That's why delivery is so hard, because a lot of drivers know these motherfuckers don't care about them. If you don't care if you get your food hot or cold or either on time, drivers shouldn't give a shit. If you don't care about the driver, the driver's not going to give a shit about you. So these tips show appreciation. They show people care. It ain't about the value or the food only costs $2. Why should I tip you two? It's convenience, motherfucker. Convenience. You didn't have to get up off your fucking couch, start your broken down ass fucking Buick, and take your ass down to fucking Burger King. You didn't have to do that. Somebody else did it for you. It's the fucking point that they went ahead and just delivered your food so you didn't have to start that ragged ass fucking Skylark sitting in your fucking driveway. That's what they did it for. So I can't stand when I hear about, oh, I ain't got to tip you. I don't like, that shit burns my ass. It's like fucking diarrhea coming out their fucking mouth. It burns my ass. Oh, you ain't, ain't nobody got to tip you. Ain't nobody got to worry about tipping these drivers. These drivers, the company should pay more. You're right, they should. You know they should. We know they should. But because they're not, what are we going to do about it? A lot of us cherry pick. A lot of us decline rides and shit. So that keeps us from relying on you as a rider or a customer from tipping us. We don't rely on your money. When it's not there, we don't fucking bother you about it. We don't. We just don't do your shit. But it's when people get mad or when people try to be nice and say, you know what, I'm gonna actually deliver this dude's fucking cheeseburger. I'm gonna deliver his motherfucking cheeseburger. 
You know, I ain't gonna tip you for that. That's you. You chose to bring me my burger. You cho You know what? I was looking out for your raggedy ass. I ain't doing that shit no more. And that's how a lot of drivers have started becoming. We stop looking out for people. So when somebody like this guy tips me 881, I'm sitting in this parking lot. This is what we do it for. Good people like him that we know still exist. The good motherfuckers that we know exist. Not you raggedy, salty motherfuckers. We don't do it for y'all. Y'all can sit on Facebook and YouTube and all this. Oh, we don't got to tip nobody. We don't even do this shit for y'all. We don't. Y'all are the last motherfuckers we do it for. You non-tipping motherfuckers. Y'all are the last ones we do it for. We do it for cats like that. Who know we sitting in this fucking parking lot waiting on this motherfucking plane to land. While washing my car down. Doing my motherfucking wheels and shit. We do it for people like him. Not for motherfuckers like you. Driving. This is the shit that pops up. $6.66. 60 cent. 26 minutes. 12 miles. And then some shit like this will pop up. No to all this fucking shit. Especially that. No to that for real. But that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. And motherfuckers really think that we're going to be out here doing these fucking ragged ass rides. This motherfucking app is going nuts right now. And they start, started sending me shit all at the same time. Everybody's sending me shit at the same time right now. Lyft and Uber both was sending shit. They ain't sending me shit all day. I've been driving down fucking Southern just cruising. And all of a sudden, they want to all send me shit at the same time. A Uber Eats order come through, a fucking Uber X order come through, a Lyft regular ride come through. All these motherfuckers hitting at the same exact time. Tell me these apps ain't connected. These motherfuckers know what they doing. They're like, hey, that car is available. Why wasn't I available on all y'all apps until at the same time? They waited until the exact same time to all send me orders at the exact same time. Was my car like in a motherfucking wormhole somewhere? Did I just pop the fuck up in a new galaxy or something? No, my car been here. So why are you motherfuckers sending me a ride at the exact same time? Because these motherfucking apps is linked together somehow. I can't prove it, but I know these motherfuckers. This shit can't be a coincidence that every time I crank up one app, all of a sudden they all start sending me shit. But if I only have one app running, I don't get shit from nobody. The moment I turn on the other app, okay, now everybody want to hear him send me shit. These motherfuckers is using the same servers. And some of these servers got latency periods and shit, and the other ones don't. Something just screwy is going the fuck on. I don't even know. $11 for like 16 miles? No. I'm at motherfucking, I'm at motherfucking Quick Trip right now, backing into a spot over by the air pump, about to park this motherfucking kick back. These old motherfucking Quasar ass fucking apps. Okay, I'm sitting over here kicking back at Quick Trip, and these are the certain things they're trying to send me right now. Just like a bunch of bullshit. They just sent me something that was like $21 UberX share for like 30 miles north, way north. And here's another seven mile trip right here for $4. Like, nah, I'm cool on that. I said, this is what they're up to tonight. They're back to the same old shit. They're Thanksgiving shit right now. Cause then I'm sitting way over here. And I know there's nothing in the area. Look at that, 10 miles away. 10 miles away for a two mile trip, they're gonna give me 558. That's like 12 miles for less than six bucks. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. I'm telling you, man, and, and a lot of flights are landing tonight. People wondering why I'm not at the airport. The airport was crazy. Now, the only way that it worked out so well for me is because I messaged the guy and I told him, be at Terminal uh, 4 North. He said, I'm landing at Terminal 3. I said, well, go to the north side. The app had me picking him up on the south side of Terminal 3. I was at the waiting lot over on 24th Street. So I would have had to go all the way through Terminal 3 back around. When I picked him up on the north side of Terminal 3, where I told him to be, he, he saw the car coming up, hurry up, ran up, got in, threw him in real quick, shot out of there. It was super fast. As we were driving past the turn where you can go back to Terminal 3 South, cars were backed up all the way around that corner. I would have sat in that shit for a good 20 minutes trying to get through. Cars were backed up all the way on the south side coming into the airport. Plus, anybody on the north trying to get south on the little horseshoes, they were all backed up. That's why I messaged him ahead of time and said, hey, meet me at Terminal 3 North. I said, meet me at Terminal 4 North. He said, well, I'm landing Terminal 3. Well, meet me on the north side. Don't go south. The app's going to say south automatically. They want all us to pick up people on the south. He was like, okay. I said, where are you at? Door 7. Cool. Terminal 3 North, door 7. Got you. App had him over on door seven south where all the crazy shit was. So I tell motherfuckers, when you know how these drives, how these streets work, driverless cars won't do what we do. We're drivers. We know what the fuck is going on. We know how to make it easier to get you. Driverless cars are going to go where the app send them. And usually the people who are working these driverless cars, 
they don't know how these streets really work. They're working off of algorithms and shit. When I told him where to go, where to be, he probably had no idea why I was telling him that. And I said, it's going to be less hectic. Trust me on this one. As soon as I pulled up, I mean, as soon as I got to Terminal 3, I shot right in the north. He came out, threw his luggage in the back, hopped in. Everybody was on the curb looking like, damn, that was quick. Like, yeah, motherfucker, I get this. I know how to do it. Threw him in real quick. Turn that shit to start. We shot out of there. Look at that. $7 for like, what, nine miles? No, I'm cool. And that's why driverless cars aren't better than drivers. We know these streets. We know these airports. We know how to get people to and from real fast. And that's why he's probably so, that's why he sent me that big ass tip. Because he was like, damn, everybody else was still standing on the curb, motherfucker. You shot in, got me a shot out. Yeah, because these motherfuckers don't know what they're doing. I work by the airport. I live by the airport, so I work airport quite a bit. I know how to, just like Bighorn Kev. Bighorn Kev will tell you, if somebody's on 4 North and you're coming from 4 South, go upstairs. Don't go all the way through Terminal 3. Go upstairs. Horseshoe upstairs and drop back down right on, on 4 North. Big Horn, Big Horn Kev knows how to do this shit. There's a lot of drivers that knows how to do this. Driverless cars and these little algorithms and these motherfuckers sitting on their laptops that never drove before, but they on laptops trying to, you know, set algorithms and shit. They don't know what they fucking doing. We know what we doing in these streets. So when we ask for the money, we're saving you time, headache, effort, energy, traffic. We deserve the money because it took us a while to learn these fucking streets. It goes through a learning curve. So when I'm teaching motherfucking shit on my channel, showing y'all how I'm navigating, the logic I'm using in certain areas, even having a discussion like this. If you drive in Phoenix, you're going to appreciate this shit because it's going to save you a fucking lot of learning. A lot of learning. We've been doing this shit four or five years. Some guys seven years. We still learning shit every day. We learning it, but we pass that knowledge to you now. We not learning it, holding it on to hurt you. So oh, I'm a better driver than you. You don't know what I know. I got secrets that you don't know. I'm a better driver. Fuck that. I'm going to make the whole driving community better. I'm going to do what I can to make the whole community better. So you can sit there and hold secrets all you want. Cool. If that makes you feel good, knock yourself the fuck out. I have nothing against that. But it don't make me feel good to see another driver struggling. This motherfucker got three kids at home. Look at that dollar a mile trip. Five down. Nah, I'm cool on that shit. This motherfucker got kids at home trying to get him to come back home as quick as possible so we can tuck them in, give them popcorn, read him a motherfucking bedtime story and shit. And you motherfuckers want to hold a secret, got this motherfucker hemmed up at the airport. Fuck that. Get this driver off the street. Tell him what he needs to know so we can get back to his family. Nah, I don't want that either. It's about five miles of five dollars. No, I'm cool. And that's why I do what I do. I don't mind telling people how to make this shit work. I really don't. I'm not doing that UberX shared, not no shares. And so I'm glad when people that sub this channel appreciate the knowledge we given. And it's the haters on this motherfucker. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. You're not telling people that's bad advice. You know? But they never give shit. They never say shit. They never give good advice. They just sit around wanting, oh, that's not right advice. That's not good advice. You're not saying what's right. Well, why don't you say what's right? Oh, I'm not telling nobody nothing. I got a secret. You can join my Patreon and pay me $20 and I'll tell you the secret because you don't know the secret. I mean, shut the fuck up. I already know what that shit's about. I already know what that shit's about. Motherfuckers like to kind of sell you some bullshit but not tell you what's really relevant in these comments and on this chat. If you want to help a motherfucker out, help somebody out. Don't come over with no bullshit, though. We don't play that. That's not what we're doing over here. Look at that. $4 for some Wendy's. Damn, they're 12 fucking miles. $4. 25 minutes. That's $8 an hour delivering something, driving 22 miles, 23 miles. You driving 23 miles for $8 an hour. And that's just as worse right there. <laughs> it's like, fuck that shit. I'm driving no fucking 14 miles for $11. But that's why I don't do delivery. Because motherfuckers like that need to go start that motherfucking Buick Skylark. Make that motherfucker start. Use a screwdriver to hit that motherfucker against the starter solenoid, against the sidewall. Pop that motherfucker, make it spark. Motherfucker, start up. Now you can drive your ass up out of there now. My starter fucked up. Don't worry. Get you a screwdriver. Use the starter solenoid. Hit that motherfucker against the side fender. Your car going to start up every time. Trust me. I know this shit. Once you use the power wire and you fucking touch that screwdriver on the power terminal of that solenoid and you hit the side fender of that motherfucking car, that starter going to kick on. Your motherfucking car going to start. Don't worry about your motherfucking ignition. I got you covered. I'm old school. <laughs> Look, this is crazy. So they've got all of these airport rides coming through right now with $11 surges included. And that's, I mean, that's a $6 ride right there. It's $6 for like 17 miles. Got it. Look at that. 
$24 for 21 miles, but it's an $11 service. That's $3 or that's $13 for that ride. That's, that's nuts. Like they're really trying to send me to the airport. I'm like, I don't want to be in the queue. Leave me alone. No, not update. Okay. No. So I'm not accepting rides right now. Let's go this way. Okay, cool. And they're going to log me out completely and I don't give a shit no more. It's like, fuck that. We're done with Uber because I'm not doing that bullshit, man. I hate when they do that. They're forcing you to try to take these bullshit rides. So I'm just going to jump over the lift and see what Lyft's got. It's like, fuck them, man. I ain't got time for Uber, man. I don't feel like playing the log in game, log out game. And they keep doing that shit at the airport. I'm not even by the airport. I don't want to fuck with that airport right now. I did a couple of airports. It's cool. But at the same rate, it's like they're trying to force people to do that shit. And nobody's like, you know, want to fight through all that traffic and deal with all that shit right now. I did, what, two or three airport trips today so far, and that's it. Well, now you give me some $3 shit like this. $3 to go up to Tempe Marketplace to come back down. I'm not doing that shit. Not for no $3. Like, no. And this is Liv's raggedy ass right here. This is the shit they do all the time. $26 for about 27 miles. No. And that's what a four dollar bonus right there so and that's what's going to start happening all of these rides are going to start coming through at a dollar a mile it's sunday night right now 13 dollars for 11 miles mm. let's take that watch this shit watch what i do i bet i don't go that far because i just saw what they did they fucked up so they said i had to go out the airport the other way but she's at a hotel just north of the airport so I can go pick her up at the airport and drop her off. She's like maybe a mile and a half north of the airport. So this is really going to be like six miles by the time I'm done. Because they fucked up. Or it's going to be six and a half to get to her and maybe a mile and a half north, if that, to get to her hotel up north. They got her going four miles, like five miles all the way around. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to pick her up and I'm going to end up pick, going up 44th Street north to drop her off instead of going all the way over to the 10 or the 10 coming back down the 202 and then dropping off at the 202 that's way too much that was way too much she just has to go up 44th street that's it and it'll be like way shorter than 13 miles for 13 dollars it's going to be like seven or eight miles for 13 dollars so watch how this fucking works out oh man that was a 14 dollar surge at the airport they dropped that shit to 275 real quick old raggedy motherfuckers they're gonna probably try to give me an airport ride now so when that shit was 14 i was like oh shit i had it on paw patrol i just turned it on i was like damn but the thing is i've been driving on um i've been driving on lyft let me hear him put it on paw patrol so i can show you some lyft shit they ain't got nothing over here anyways yeah i've been driving on lyft for a while and Lyft's been actually pretty good tonight, man. Surprisingly, surprisingly, I got 60 bucks out of these raggedy motherfuckers. The last one I just did was this right here. It was an airport, 1288, 26, uh, $26. So 12 miles, like $2 a mile right there. Then I did this one. Here's a real short trip right here. Like almost two miles, 731. It was a $4 for two miles. So I said, let me pick this dude up. He went ahead and threw me like a $3 tip. Appreciate that shit, brother always he was just getting off work he was a cook trying to get home so i picked his ass up got him home and a lot of times i can see when those are really short trips from somewhere to somewhere it could be somebody carrying something that they don't want to carry or it could be somebody that lives in the neighborhood they just trying to get home two dollars a mile could be a dollar fifty a mile motherfuckers are tired and a lot of times they'll just tip you they'll just like you know what and it, it, the time of day it is you know it's somebody who just got off work he was a cook he was like, man, I just worked a shift, man. He said, man, they working us like dogs up in here, man. I just worked a 12-hour shift. I'm just trying to get home. So I was like, cool. He hopped in at the Circle K, took him straight down the street. He gave me a fucking tip for that shit. I was like, appreciate it, dog. Then this one right here, this was another one, airport ride, you know, $17.11. She threw me a tip real quick, $4.60. It wasn't a ride I wanted to take, but I wanted to get back to the airport. And when I took her ride, that's how I got locked into that, you know, that ride there and then that 1032 ride with the $16 surge on it. That's how I got locked into those by getting back towards the airport and picking her up. So sometimes I'll take a ride to get to a region and I tell people that all the time. I'll take a ride just to get to a region. That's what this ride was. It wasn't even a dollar a mile because like I said, it was 1334 was up front and it was for 11 miles. 
but she ended up throwing the 460 tip on there. And I was like, you know what? I need to get back to the airport anyway. So sometimes you got to take that dollar a mile ride. You can see how far I was. I was in Tempe, left Tempe, went all the way over here, picked her up at the airport, took her straight up north. She was just right there. It was easy. I mean, she was just north of the airport, just north of the freeway. Her car was parked there. She didn't get to her car. So I love stuff like that, you know, to get me back into the mix and shit. But let me see what my weekly breakdown is. All right. Five hours, 229. So I'm now about 40 bucks an hour. Okay. Now I'm officially 40 bucks an hour with ragamuffins over here. They made $73 off of me so far. So they still ripping me the fuck off. That's cool. You raggedy bastards. But at least I'm getting my money. I'm getting my money now. So I'm at 40 bucks an hour, you know, like 50% rate. You know, I've been online for almost 11 hours driving for five. So I keep this motherfucker running in the background. I was sitting at home one night with it online for like two hours. Didn't get shit. That's cool, whatever. I see how you raggedy motherfuckers are. But I got 229 over there for the week. And what do I got over here for the week? Let's see. 441. So I'm at about 660 bucks. Let's say 660, 670 dollars right now. Not too bad, not too bad. And I don't work a whole lot of hours. I mean, what, Sunday? Damn it, they won't let me click on it. What if, what if? But as you can see, I worked a little bit every night. But most of the times, it's not me working that night. It's me working early in the morning. I've been doing those 5 a.m. reservations. So if I did Wednesday and I drove all through the night, but my reservation on Thursday was 5 something in the morning, it made it look like I was working Thursday, vice versa. If I did Thursday, worked early morning Friday, it looked like it worked Friday. So a lot of my days going to look like I worked seven days straight when I really haven't. My shifts start late at night, like 10 or 11 at night. Sometimes they don't end till 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. The cutoff is 4 a.m. So that means I'm working an hour, hour and a half, two hours into the next day when I'm really not even working the next day for real. So it kind of is, it looks kind of screwy like that. Like, damn, you work every day? Probably not. I could work like three or four days and it looks like I work seven days because I, my shift wraps over to the next day and includes the next day's time in there. So that's why I try to explain to people what I'm doing as you're seeing my video play, as you're seeing how I'm wrapping shit up. Because a lot of people might say, well, damn, dog, you working seven days a week, motherfucker. No, no, you don't understand. I work late nights. I don't work days. Uh, I'll start at 9, 10 at night sometimes. Might end it at like 6, 7 in the morning and because I got so many good reservations in the morning. Makes it look like I worked two days, but really that was just one shift. That's all it was. So the day I got 126 over there and over on Lyft I got, I don't even know how much I got on Lyft, 60. So I'm at almost $200. I made two, over 200 yesterday. I made over 200 yesterday, might make over 200 today. So that's two days in a row I've made over 200 bucks. That shit's hard to do, man, with this shitty fucking economy right now. It's hard to do. Let me turn ragamuffins back on real quick because I'm close enough. Let's see if they give me an airport ride. Like I said, it, making 200 bucks yesterday plus 200 bucks a day, honestly, would it be in a... Fuck, no, I'm not doing that shit. Like 14 Uber X share? No. Because with it being a holiday weekend, I mean, I should have been banking out $350, $400 a night. I should have had $800 in two nights, and I'm, I'm sitting at $400 in two nights. I'm making half of what I should be making because I know my market. I know how holidays work. I'm not making the money I should be making, and we don't, and we know why. These ragged-ass apps is, is ripping us off right now. They're, like I said, Lyft is making $70-something dollars on me, and that's after all expenses and everything else. They're still profiting. So they stole over $70 from me so far because usually they're in the fucking negative. Y'all know they're in the negative because I show y'all every week they're in the negative. So now all of a sudden they're in a the positive, like, and I'm only taking like decent rides. I'm taking decent rides, not horrible rides, decent rides, and they're still in the positive. That means they're overcharging people. That means the ride bonuses are not really the ride bonuses. They're overcharging people. They're charging people surge pricing, but I'm not getting surge pay. That's what it comes down to. I'm going to go up here and sit in this Circle K in a minute. So like I said, you got to just understand how these apps work. Like I was, I'll go in here real quick and show you what I mean. Like if I go weekly breakdown, see that? If you go here, they're making $73. When you see that estimated lift fee, 73 Now you go last week. Now let me go find another week where it was like $229. let us see where it was $229. Okay, 227 is close enough. Look, they're losing $39. They're losing 39 that week. So this week, I did 227. Basically the exact same weeks, but look, I did it in four hours, 12 minutes. I made 227 online for six hours. Online for six hours, four hours, 12 minutes, and they lost $39 on me. Go to the current week where we at right now, and you'll sh I'll show you where we at. 229 online for 10 hours. Five, 
They're probably going to the airport. Look at this shit. No, I'm not doing that. Stamina 20 miles with Uber X share? No, we're not doing that. So this week, look at that. 10 hours instead of six. Online for five hours instead of four. And I only made $2 more. I worked an hour longer to make $2 more. I worked an hour longer to make $2 more during the holiday. During the holiday. Let me see what we got. Uber X? No, we're not doing that shit. You know, turn these motherfuckers off. Let's see what this fucking bomb won't. Yeah, what's up, man? If I ain't got no, I'm still working right now, brother. Trying to do it myself, man. All right, man. Good luck to you. Oh, no problem, brother. You too, my man. Yeah, he went home as motherfuckers walk up. I'm like, dude, right now I got a fucking six hundred dollar goddamn note on this fucking car you seeing right now, and you don't have a six hundred dollar note, so I need to come up with six hundred. You trying to come up with two dollars? It's like shit, man. We operating at two different levels right now. I gotta come up with six hundred. Shit. But yeah, back to this shit. Six hours, you know, on that other week back here, right here. Six hours online, four hours booked, and I made you know two twenty seven. And Lyft lost 39. So we go to the current week, a holiday fucking week right now, mind you. Holiday week. I worked more hours, made less money, you know, online longer. And Lyft made $73 on me. So instead of Lyft losing, losing 40, they made 73. That's a $110 swing. A $110 swing. From minus 40 to plus 73 is a $110 swing. So these motherfuckers stole $110, basically. Because if I worked the same exact hours, an hour more, an hour more during the holiday week, made the same exact fucking money, and they're up, but I'm not up. They're up 110, but I'm not up 110. You telling me these raggedy motherfuckers ain't stealing? How are they up 110, but I'm only up $2 more? See what I'm saying? I know numbers. I know numbers. I worked an hour more. Drove. That's book time. I drove one hour more. Drove one hour. Not just being online one hour, motherfucker. I drove one hour more, and I ain't doing shitty trips. That's four hours and twelve minutes for two twenty-seven. So that's about fifty dollars an hour. That's about fifty dollars an hour. That don't even a holiday weekend. This is forty dollars an hour. Forty dollars an hour on a holiday weekend. So how the fuck they come up a hundred and ten dollars more, but I only came up two dollars more. For working an hour longer. So I made $2 more for an hour more of driving. That's what I'm telling you. These motherfuckers, they'll steal from you. You got to watch this shit. You got to watch this shit. And that's the whole truth about my Thanksgiving weekend. A lot of us had a weekend like that. Thanks trashing. That's what I called it on my last video. Thanks trashing. Because that's what it was. They gave us a bunch of trash. They didn't give us anything to live on. You know, I got a box right here. I just finished packing that up. Because, you know, I still buy my son clothes. He doesn't live with me, but I still buy him clothes. I still got to buy him shoes. He's growing. And that's what we do ride share for. As we go out, we make this money. We take care of our family. Not only do I got to go buy him clothes, paying the tax on it and everything else, I got to pay for shipping too. Now, I could always send him money and say, hey, go buy yourself some clothes, but I like to choose some stuff. You know, I've been his dad, you know, for the past seven years. Me and him have been, you know, well, not the past seven because he's been gone for like about two or three living with his mom down in uh, Port St. Lucie. But for the most part, it was me and him just out shopping, having fun. So I still got that in my soul. You know, I love shopping for my son. It's just what it is. But when I'm out here driving, knowing I went from making two G's last Thanksgiving, two G's to this Thanksgiving, making a little over $600. And that's $1,400 I didn't get. It's $1,400 I didn't get. And there's going to be a lot of gig tubers out there telling y'all bullshit. Oh, it ain't even like that, man. It ain't even like that. It, this is how it is every Thanksgiving, man. Y'all saw my truth. Y'all see what I did. I just I dropped the last video plus this video, plus I think one before that, showing how my Thanksgiving week went. And I'm sitting here running my car into the ground for this shit. So right now my car's in a million pieces because I got to replace my thermostat because I don't have heat in the car right now. Then I got to turn around and probably replace my oil cooler while I got it apart and I'm already down that far. But this is the shit we do. We sitting there taking care of our vehicles, working on our cars and everything, trying to save money to drive these passengers around. Meanwhile, the apps are stealing money from us, stealing our tips, stealing fares from us, not telling people. And like I said, there's a few people out in California saying passengers are telling them, hey, we still getting charged for Lux rides. We're paying for Lux rides. But yet as drivers, we're not getting Lux pay. See, that's the kind of shit Lyft is pulling right now. We telling y'all these apps are overcharging people. 
A lot of gig tubers ain't gonna talk about that because it's too real for them. They live in this fake ass world of, ooh, I'm gonna be a great YouTube channel one day and I'm gonna be on the side of a corporate. No, you ain't. No, you, you're a shill. That's what you are, a shill. Meanwhile, we sit here trying to educate drivers about true business, what's really going on, how to take care of your family while this is going on, what we're gonna do with the money. That's what we're doing on YouTube, what we're doing on Facebook in certain communities and everything. We ain't out here playing games with people. We know the apps are playing games with us, but we're turning around becoming a coalition, becoming a force of intelligence so we can say we can battle against these apps that we see are trying to get rid of us as far as us being well-paid people in a gig economy. They want to pay us as less as possible as if we're just disposable. We're the people moving people from point A to point B. We're drivers. Without drivers, you're just an app. That's all you are. You're, you're like a video game on a screen. People just touch it, moving stuff around. But when it comes to something in real life, pulling up to the curb, picking somebody up, getting their ass from point A to point B, that's what we do. We do it safely. And we do it with cars that we constantly working on, either putting in shops. So for that, we deserve this money. I don't give a fuck what none of these gig tubers say. I feel we deserve this money. They can sit around and be a, oh no, man, it's okay, it's cool. We just gotta keep updating the app, it's cool. If we just act nice to the apps, they're gonna be nice to us, it's cool. This is business, this shit is cutthroat. Get your head out your ass.